In the last video, we saw that Theo found the goblin Scaram, who scammed him, trying to trick another unsuspecting new merchant. So he confronted him and said that all the things he sold were trash, and he explained that none of them had any magic and worked on basic principles and batteries. After trying to save his face for some time, the goblin ran away, and Theo told the newbie merchant to be careful as he went back on his way quite satisfied with his actions. But the person pretending to be the newbie merchant was actually a clever fox named Zarath, who was an inspector in the security branch of the Wandering Merchant Association. There were complaints about Scaram scamming new merchants, and after months of hard work and planning, she was about to arrest him as soon as he sold a fake good to her. But Theo broke through the security circle without anyone noticing, and spoiled her plan, and she decides to teach her subordinates a harsh lesson but she is also curious about the wandering cat merchant and decides to investigate him further. In his cave, Sejin teaches the rabbits the trick of cutting potatoes into four parts so that they can sow 400 plants out of just 100 tomatoes. And after that is done, it is time to harvest the sweet potatoes. First, Sejin asks the rabbits to harvest the leaves and bring the sprouts to him, and they initially think that he will work hard to plant all the sprouts again. But he says that he is not going to mess up the timing just because of some XP, and the rabbits do not like that they will have to work hard. After that is done, the rabbits dance for a bountiful harvest of the sweet potatoes, and the first crop that Sejin digs up is a great surprise. It is a golden sweet potato that shines the moment it comes out of the soil, and its information window tells Sejin that it was the sweet potato pumpkin of the sun, a new mutated variety that he had grown, and it was his achievement. Sejin and the rabbits can only stare with awe at the new variety he just discovered, and he looks at a list of messages from the system about his achievement. While the job XP and harvest skill proficiency increase only by the previous amount, the real benefit is the exclusive right to cultivate the new variety. No one in the tower could cultivate the sweet potato pumpkin of the sun without his permission, and Sejin is amazed. He realizes that only he can grow and have this sweet potato, even if he harvests it in bulk and gives it to anyone else, they cannot grow it without his permission, and he can earn profits from it forever. So he does not waste any time and plants the new variety back in the soil again. Sejin admits that he really wanted to see what it tasted like, but at this point, the best decision was to plant it and harvest it later. After he is done with that, Sejin exclaims that it is time to harvest some regular sweet potatoes, and the rabbits are as excited as he is. Everyone works together, and they get a good yield of sweet potatoes, which they include in their dinner for the night alongside fish. After the sweet potatoes covered in onion leaves are roasted enough, Sejin pokes them with a pointed stick to see if they are cooked to the center. And then he and the rabbits blew air on the sweet potato, hoping to cool it quickly. As Sejin breaks it, he says that it was something to die for, and the rabbits are already drooling. Everyone gets their share, and they enjoy it, but the husband rabbit is too impatient and almost chokes on it, while his wife comforts him. Then Sejin gets a message from the tower manager, who was waiting for his turn while wiping saliva off his mouth. Sejin thanks the manager for letting the rabbits eat first and then gifts ten sweet potatoes to them. The manager is grateful and says that he will thoroughly enjoy himself. After that, Sejin asks the sickle rabbit if she is done eating and could she help him, and she gets ready to work. Inside his office, the tower manager is enjoying the sweet potatoes one at a time because they are smaller than his bite size, but he has eaten all of them and now craves more. As the tower manager tries to ask for more sweet potatoes, he sees Sejin doing something strange through the crystal ball. With the help of a sickle rabbit, he had made long French fries like slices of the sweet potatoes and was drying them over onion leaves. He says that after drying them completely on one side, they should turn them over to the other side, and he asks the sickle rabbit to cut one more sweet potato. She does that quickly and effortlessly, and Sejun praises her for the even sizes of the pieces, and she is quite proud. The tower manager sends him a message, saying that he is very furious that Sejun is throwing away delicious sweet potatoes. But he calmly replies that he was not throwing them away but drying them to make something even more delicious later. The manager is curious and asks him what he is making, and Sejun asks him in return if he has ever heard about the dried sweet potato. In the outside world, Kim Dongshik has reached Sejin's home to fulfill their contract, and as he rings the bell, someone shouts, asking who he is. Dongshik asks if it was Park Sejin's address, and his younger brother Sedol opens the door in a hurry, eager for any news about his elder brother. His parents are quite shocked, but then they are even more confused when they see a man they do not know. They ask Dongshik who he is and then let him in the house, offering him fruits to show hospitality. He says that they do not need to serve him anything 
and Sejin's parents ask him why he was looking for their son. They say that Sejin has been missing for some time and that they have had no contact with him. Dongshik realizes that he never introduced himself and says that he is the leader of the Phoenix Guild's fifth team as he gives them his card. Sejin's father is a bit shocked, but his younger brother is flabbergasted as he realizes that their guest was from the world-famous Phoenix Guild. Even as his parents ask him what was wrong, Sedol can only focus on his card, and he trembles as he finds that it was real. He says that the Phoenix Guild was one of the top guilds in Korea, and the leader of the fifth team was a marvelous top-tier hunter. Dongshik enjoys a fan complimenting him but acts modest, saying it is not a big deal. Sejin's parents' attitude changes quickly, and they decide to present the best thing they have in their house to their esteemed guest, and he insists that they just sit comfortably. Then the parents ask Dongshik if he was a hunter and was here for their son, was Sejin also in the tower? They are confused about when he entered the tower and why a top-tier hunter was here instead of him. Dongshik replies that he was here to deliver something to them at Sejin's request and takes out an envelope from his coat pocket. He places the envelope on the table, and Sejin's family is horrified. They think that it was a will and their son was dead, and they start crying and wailing, and Dongshik panics as he tells them that it was not a will, and their son was alive and well. The family calms down a little on hearing this, and they open the envelope to find a check inside. It takes them a lot of time trying to comprehend the zeros before they realize it is worth 50 million won. They are stunned, and Dongshik adds that Sejin gave him the message to apologize to his parents for going to the tower so suddenly, and he was well, and he wanted this money to be delivered to his parents. Sejin's father exclaims in joy, saying that his son was smart just like him and that he always knew he would make it big wherever he went. His mother asks Dongshik if Sejin was really doing well, and why he did not come here himself to give this money to them. Dongshik replies that Sejin probably could not exit the tower because of the quests, but it was a very common thing that happened with all hunters, and he urges her not to worry. Then he turns to Sedol and asks him what he meant by Sejin being missing and if they really had no idea that he entered the tower. Sedol replies that his brother suddenly went missing about five months ago, and they have had no contact with him since then. They received no news from any channel, and just in case, they even contacted the Awakened Association to ask them if someone named Park Sejun was registered there, but there was no one. Sedol asks Dongshik if people use fake names in the tower, and he replies that there are some people who do that, but he promises to inquire more about Sejun from the association through his guild later. As Sejun's family gets busy with themselves, Dongshik wonders if someone could really climb up to the 40th floor of the tower in just five months and that too with solo play. The towers had been present on Earth for 10 years, and there was no hunter who could make it that far in such a short period of time. Dongshik wonders if Sejun was a genius hunter who was unprecedented in history. Then Sedol asks the hunter if they have a talent development program in their guild, and his father smacks him, saying that while his brother was working so hard in the tower, he was just fooling around and not helping him even a little. Dongshik says that being a hunter is an extremely dangerous job where one can lose his life. The Awakened Association also does not recommend registering more than one hunter per household in case there are any casualties. After completing his task, Dongshik gets up, saying that he should take his leave now, and Sejun's parents try to stop him for some more time. They say that they have not served him anything yet and ask him to at least have a meal with them. Dongshik politely refuses their offer, saying that he came here to complete Sejun's request just as he left his tower, and had not even gone home yet, where his family was waiting for him. With that, he wishes Sejin's family goodbye and gets into his car, where he gets a message from the tower that he has completed the contract quest. Dongshik is glad and then decides that he should go home now. As he is driving back, he gets a call from his daughter, whom he really loves. He acts like a baby as he talks to her and asks her if she missed him. He asks her to guess what he brought and then answers himself, saying that he brought the thing she wanted the most. And meanwhile, in the tower, Theo is walking back to Sejin's cave while eating something he bought in the market and he complains that the 99th floor is too far away. With this, the chapter ends. In the present, Sejin is preparing to plant carrots using a new technique by dipping the carrot tops in water till they sprout, and then he plants them in the soil. He is happy that the new technique worked well and he could plant carrots quickly, even receive job experience, and increase the proficiency of his skill, sowing. The method was great for recycling too, as he took the leftover hard tops of the carrots eaten by the rabbits, and then soaked them in water in bowls made of onion leaves. After some time, leaves sprouted on the top and roots began to grow at the bottom. Then he just planted the tops in the ground and covered them with soil until only the leaves were in the open. 
because once the root has been eaten, it does not grow back. The plant focuses on developing its stem part, and it soon flowers, using which one can collect carrot seeds. Some of the early planted carrot plants had begun flowering, and Sejun was very happy that everything was going well. He tells his rabbit friend that this was what he liked about farming. Working hard gives one the feeling of being rewarded with unexpected gains that build up over time. But then Sejin gets a message from the tower master, who wants to know if the dried sweet potatoes are ready yet. Sejin gets up, saying he was going to check them soon anyway, and he goes to the central rock with his rabbit friends on his shoulder to see that the sweet potato shards have dried really well. He picks up one chip and is very excited about its taste, and as soon as he takes a bite, he is overwhelmed by its deliciousness. The dried sweet potato was sweet and savory, its crust was dried sufficiently, and the inside was still perfectly moist and soft. He is lost in the taste, and his rabbit friends think the same thing about the new snack. Sejin says no one can resist the soft, chewy, and addictive texture, and the information window for the dried sweet potato opens up. It mentions how the roasted sweet potato was dried in the sun for 24 hours to lock in the moisture and sweetness while providing a crusty exterior and a savory and sweet taste. He is really excited about this success and decides to dry many more sweet potatoes to snack on them whenever he is bored. As Sejin gathers more of them to eat, his rabbit friends are also enjoying their taste. And then the manager sends him a message informing him that he was forgetting something. Sejin apologizes and prepares an offering to the tower manager, who wants to eat the dried sweet potatoes quickly and wants him to complete the quest right away. But as Sejin looks at the onion leaf bowl, he thinks of something. He tells the tower manager to wait for a moment and begins to look for something inside his bag. Sejin says that it does not feel appropriate to send food to the manager every time in an onion leaf bowl, and this time he has a better idea. The manager does not care about formalities and just wants the snack soon but Sejin promises that it will take only a while, and is already done in a minute. He presents the dried sweet potatoes packed nicely in a poly bag and exclaims that his packaging is complete, and the manager is surprised. Sejin explains that outside the tower, he used to work in the convenience store and has some skills in packaging. He has packed the sweet potatoes in gift form and is proud to present them to the manager since it was their first time trying this. Sejin wants this experience to be even more special, as not only will the packaging make it look more pretty, it will also keep it fresh longer and the moisture will remain locked in inside the chips. The tower manager is lost in thought, and when Sejin asks if they were not going to take it, the manager starts and thanks him. Sejin is not impressed by the reaction and is upset that he just got a lukewarm thanks after he worked so hard to impress the manager. He asks the manager if they thought he was playing a joke with food, and the manager is actually smitten by the cuteness of the package. The manager is blushing and trembling with excitement as they hold the tiny package in their hand and panic, shouting, how could someone eat something so cute? And Sejin likes this over-the-top reaction. Only a few hours later, Sejin is running out of the dried sweet potato strips. He says that he had dried 40 whole sweet potatoes and wonders how they could disappear so quickly, but it is clear that he and the rabbits could not resist the delicious snack and were still munching on them. Then suddenly the queen bee comes to him with something interesting, and Sejin asks her what the matter was. She happily places a ball in his hand, and Sejin is confused about what it is. Then he reads the information window that says it was a pollen bundle made of corn pollen. Sejin is surprised to see it and then realizes that his corn plants are already in the flowering stage. He goes to them with the queen bee and says that he has not been paying much attention to the corns lately, and the plants were already this big. All of them had flowered and silked, but then he realized that there was no nectar in corn flowers, so the bees could not collect honey. That is why the worker bees were collecting pollen using their furry hind legs. Sejin wonders if he should try eating the pollen bundle because some people take them as health supplements, and he decides to try one, which tastes slightly bitter but sweet like candy. He likes it and thanks the queen bee with a huge smile, and she wants to make him happier, so she orders all her worker bees to immediately come over to her. They make the bundles of pollen they were carrying and give them all to Sejin as he thanks them, and the queen bee hovers above them proudly. He says that there were too many pollen bundles, and he could not eat them all as they were too precious. At the same time, Theo announces his return as he jumps into the cave. But as soon as he sees the queen poison honeybee, he is scared and stands on his toes with his tail stiff. He tells Sejin that he was scared, but he replies that it was fine since the honeybees knew he was on their side. The queen bee also wants to become friends with Theo, so she gives him the remaining pollen bundles. But Theo is allergic to pollen, and he clings to Sejin 
wiping his nose with his shirt and pulling it with his claws. Sejin tells him to get off because this is his only shirt and he does not want it to be ruined. But then he asks the sales cat if he did what he was asked to do, and Theo replies that he completed all the missions and even sold out. Sejin asks him if he conveyed the news and money to his family successfully, and Theo replies that it should have been done because there was a contract in place. Sejin is surprised to find that the contract was already complete, and he realizes that the 50 million won and his regards were successfully delivered to his family. He asks Theo if everything would have gone smoothly, and the cat merchant replies that it would have. The tower contracts are ironclad even outside the tower, but he would go and meet the person he contacted to confirm the details. Sejin thanks him and says that he was dependable. After that, he begins to think about his family, which included his parents and his younger brother Sedol. Sejin says that he was in a pinch because he disappeared without leaving them a message, and it was bothering him a lot. He thinks that they must have been extremely worried about him, but now they would feel better. They must have had no idea that he went inside the tower and began farming there and they could not even dream about him partnering up with some rabbits, bees, and a cat merchant. Sejin wonders what kind of face his family members would make if they learned about him being a tower farmer. He thinks that his little brother Sedol will definitely make fun of him since he always annoyed him. As Theo greets the rabbits, Sejin continues with his remembrances and thinks that his dad has a hobby of gardening and growing flowers, and he would certainly be curious about his cultivation practices and even give him some tips. Sejin thinks that he has inherited his natural talent for farming from his dad, but then he gets even more nostalgic as he remembers his mom, who always served them a full course meal including everything they liked. As Sejin thinks back about the simpler and happier times with his family, he begins to miss them a lot. But then the rabbits, the bees, and Theo come up to him and remind him that they are his family here. As the queen bee sits on his head, he cuddles with the black rabbit and Theo, saying that they are also his family. The cat merchant feels the need to confirm his status in his family, and Sejin replies that, of course, he was also a part of the family as his one and only employee, the sales cat Theo. The cat is pleased by his praises and decides to report everything to Sejin about his recent business trip. He says that he used 50 tower coins for the contract, 14 tower coins for facilitating it, and then some more for buying the necessary items. Even after all that, he still has 208 tower coins left. Sejin is shocked to learn about the ridiculous amount that was much greater than the last time. Theo says that it was as he had told him. In an auction, people increase the prices of the goods on their own. Along with the money, he has other good things for Sejin including the utensils he had asked for. Sejin is amazed as he inspects the pan, saying that it has been so long since he last saw the sign of civilization. The rabbits are also trying to make sense of the utensils with their silly antics, and then Sejin finds that even the cast iron pot has an information window, and its own item mark since it was made in the tower. He finds that the item was ranked D and its manufacturer detail was undisclosed, and he asks Theo about the last part. But before he can get an answer, he spots a dagger on the ground, and as he picks it up, he feels like being inside the tower for the first time in ages. His eyes gleam with wonder and excitement as he says that this was his first weapon ever since he came inside the tower. The information window of the dagger does not tell him much and is full of question marks, but it mentions that the dagger was of E rank, and only those with strength above 5 and a level above 10 could wield it. Sejin is curious about the question marks, and he asks Theo where he got the dagger from. Theo is busy playing with the rabbits and replies that he heard about Blacksmith's Lottery, where some things were sold at a cheap price, so he just bought what he thought would be good. Sejin does not understand much about the dagger and the lottery corner, but since he meets the requirement, he thinks he should use the dagger. But the tower master sends him a message, saying that if he used an unappreciated item recklessly, he could put himself in danger. Sejin is curious about what could happen, but the tower manager offers to appraise the dagger for him. The new quest is generated about the dagger, but that is joined with another quest in which Sejin has to send dried sweet potatoes to the manager to get his dagger appraised. Sejin is disappointed and says that this was not the right way to do it, and the manager replies that it was necessary to give something so that he could help him. The tower manager still acts like it is not doing this for the food. But then the message window says that the manager was wiping its saliva. Sejin is furious and complains that the manager took too much earlier too. But since it would feel uncomfortable to use an item with undisclosed information, he decides to follow up with the requests. He gives the dagger first, and then the tower manager uses his appraisal skills to find that the dagger was not harmful. 
Then, as Sejin offers the dried sweet potatoes, the manager gives him his dagger back. Sejin reads the information about the dagger, which was named Keens's training short dagger, and was used by the ranger Keens of the Red Mountain to train during his childhood. The blade was made of black iron and was decently heavy, but a small amount of mithril was also mixed in it, so it was quite sturdy and could retain its sharpness for a long time. It was produced by the blacksmith Raven, who was a black hammer dwarf, and its true rank was B. It had a skill called Proficiency Increase Level 1 that increased the proficiency of any skill the user practices with the dagger 5% faster. Sejin does not need to read all this to be amazed, and he is blown away by the fact that it was a named weapon. They were very rare, and in the outside world, even the lowest quality weapons were sold for 100 million won, and this one looked very rare and precious. Sejin is stunned that Theo got this from the lottery, and he thinks that the cat was not just some pushover like he thought. He indeed had some talent for finding useful things. But outside the cave in the forests of the 99th floor, there is one more creature. It is the red bear who scares Theo and almost killed Sejin during one blue moon night. But right now, it does not look anything like a monster and is just a cute little bear. But as Theo and the glutton rabbit are enjoying Chiris, Sejin inspects his farms, and then suddenly, he takes a fighting stance and uses the newly acquired dagger to slash the onion plants in front of him. The dagger is quite sharp, and he asks his friends what they think about his skills, and they clap for him. Theo asks him if he liked that short dagger, and he smiles, saying that he was very impressed that the cat brought it. Theo gets angry and demands to be called by his title as the sales cat that Sejun had promised to give him in return for completing the missions. Sejun pats him, saying that he was sales cat Theo, and he did an amazing job. The cat merchant accepts his apology and quite arrogantly tells him that he will let it slide this time as he pushes Sejun's hands away. But he notices that, despite seeming like a naive pushover, Theo actually had golden paws. Speaking of paws, Sejin starts playing with the cat's toe beans, and he suddenly finds him cute. Theo asks him what he was doing, and he replies that his paws look really amazing, before holding him in his lap and asking him if he would like one more pack of Chiris. Theo is overjoyed, and his internal celebration is quite aggressive, as he thinks that at the end of the day, even Sejun was a human, and no human could resist the superiority of his paws. He laughs, telling Sejun that he was a busy cat and that he should hurry with the treat. He does not like that attitude and thinks that something is fishy, so he silently picks the cat up and places him on the ground. Sejun tells Theo that his one hour as the sales cat was over, and the black rabbit tries to control his laughter. Theo panics and tells him that it was too fast, and he wants to stay as the sales cat for a little longer. Even as he requests, Sejin refuses, saying that his decision is firm. Theo cannot stay away from the position of the sales cat any longer, and he decides to reveal the trump card he had been hiding and asks him to look at the other things he had. He empties his bag, and as the modern food items come out of it, Sejin is trembling with excitement. He crawls down to check all the seasonings while Theo brags about getting them as a reward for clicking pictures. Sejin pours a bit of salt into his hand, and as he tastes it, he is overwhelmed by the salty taste after months. He smells and tastes other seasonings too, and the pungency of the peppers, the taste of spices, and the richness of other seasonings were the only things he was missing in his food. As he exclaims about it, the rabbits are also curious to check things out, and then Theo asks him if he thinks that he deserves to be a sales cat now. He wants to be a sales cat for two hours in return for this, and the overjoyed Sejin lifts him up and swings him around as he says that he could be the sales cat with these items for 24 hours if he wanted. As Sejin dances around in joy, the glutton rabbit has already started trying out salt on his carrots. Thanks to the new utensils and seasonings, Sejin cooks great food that day, and its aroma flies out of the cave. He has grilled fish, and after seasoning it with salt and pepper, he puts it on a skewer along with onion stems. As he is humming and preparing food, the smell reaches the home of the rabbits, and it wakes them up from their sleep and calls them out to the lunch place. Sejin says good morning and asks them if they are hungry because he has prepared a special dish to show off his skills today. It is a banquet of dishes, including fish and onion skewers, roasted tomatoes, dried sweet potatoes, roasted fish, and roasted onions, along with salt and pepper. Sejin tells everyone to choose the dish according to their taste and add salt and pepper if they want more. Most of the white rabbits find the pepper too spicy, but the black warrior rabbit likes the taste. Sales Cat Theo is still sleeping, and Sejin wakes him up for breakfast and asks him what he wants his roasted fish to be seasoned with. But Theo gets angry and replies that no one should play a joke on food by adding anything to it. 
he sits on Sejin's lap and enjoys his plain roasted fish, and he tells the cat that he does not know the greatness of salt and pepper. After a hearty breakfast, Sejin and the rabbits get back to their work for today, which is harvesting tomatoes, and he uses his named dagger to cut the tomato bunches. He not only gets the regular XP and skill proficiency, but the proficiency increased skill he gets with the dagger makes his progress 5% faster. Sejin likes it that the proficiency increased skill of the Keens' dagger is not limited only to battle but any task done with it. He says that a B-rank named item was expected to be this wonderful, and he wants to work hard using it to quickly increase his proficiency. Sejin takes the bunch of cherry tomatoes he just harvested and gives them to Theo whose job it is to pluck them one by one and store them in his bag. He does not like the job and complains that why does he have to do such menial labor when he was the sales cat. Sejin replies that there was no shame in working with their hands. He was the chairman here and was still working on the farm. Theo is stunned to learn that Sejin was the chairman, and he asks him if a chairman was a higher position than the sales cat. Sejin replies that it was very high, and he commands Theo to keep working hard. The cat immediately loses his arrogance and says that he learned something good today and will not stop working hard. He gets ready to leave, but laughs mischievously, thinking that one day he will climb up to the position of chairman, and then he will monopolize the right to sit in Sejin's lap. His magic bundle is full, and he starts preparing to leave, and Sejin asks him to stop by the store again and buy more things he has told him to. And on top of that, he asks Theo to go to the blacksmith's lottery again and buy anything he likes there because he does not want to let the cat's amazing talent go to waste. Theo affirms, and he says that he will soon be back before leaving. With the sales cat gone, Sejin can now focus on harvesting the rest of the cherry tomatoes in the row, and he gets 90 XP for harvesting 6 tomatoes at once, which was 50% more than the usual amount. He wonders what the reason is behind it, and the truth is revealed as he reads the information window about the cherry tomatoes he just harvested. The reason their XP was high was that their rank was D, and their properties had also increased. Each D-ranked tomato could break down 20 grams of fat upon consumption and also increase mana by 0.2 for 10 minutes, and the shelf life had also become 60 days. Sejin is amazed to find that as the crop went from E rank to D rank, all the attributes almost doubled. On top of that, it was mentioned to be even tastier than the previous cherry tomatoes, and Sejin wonders if there were more tomatoes like this. He had recently leveled up quite a bit, and he was a D rank tower farmer now, and he suspects that all the crops he cultivated after that grew up to D rank. He thinks that if Theo had waited a little longer, he could introduce the D-ranked tomatoes to the market, and they would fetch an even higher price. But there is no use in worrying about it now, and Sejin thinks that they should try out how much the taste improved as the rank of the tomatoes increased by one. He suggests to his rabbit friends that they should eat the new tomatoes and then take a nap together, and no one has any complaints. And as Theo makes his way down to the 38th floor, he feels disappointed somehow. Meanwhile, in the tower manager's office, there is a room full of all kinds of treasures, and the greatest attraction is the shining sculpture of a dragon. It was an ice statue of the tower manager, whose name is Aileen Fratani, and it was made by another dragon called Kaiser Fratani, using an ice fragment of the Blue Penguin Kingdom. But the manager has no need for the beautiful ice sculpture now, and breaks it down mercilessly and then places the gift-packed sweet potatoes in their place. The warehouse where all the treasures were kept had a permanent preservation magic spell, and the manager plans to keep the cute-looking packaging here instead of eating it. And the way the manager acts is like a high school girl experiencing her first crush, saying that her human gave it to her. Then the manager goes back to check on Sejin with the crystal ball and finds him sleeping peacefully with his rabbit friends, unaware of the dangers surrounding him. She wants to go and check out the area surrounding the cave to ensure his safety, but then spots something that Sejin needs to be alerted immediately about. He wakes up after getting wake-up calls from the manager, who tells him that this is not the time to be sleeping around. As Sejin looks around, he finds a monster at the entrance to the cave, and he screams as the black warrior rabbit climbs upon his shoulder to see what is happening. The red bear is at the entrance of the cave, and the tower manager tells it to go away, but it is startled and slips into the cave as its footing comes loose. Sejin panics and runs towards it, successfully catching the red bear that was no larger than a teddy, and he is not even sure what kind of creature he is dealing with yet. But then he reads the information window that comes along with the monster and learns that it was the baby crimson giant bear, and the innocent-looking bear is just staring at the face of the human. With this, the video ends. The cute little bear took his time entering the story, 
and we can hope for some wholesome interactions between him and Sejun and his companions. But apart from that, it seems Sejun is on good track with a new weapon and better quality harvests, along with the tower manager seemingly crushing over him. Let us find out what happens in the next chapter soon. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like and tell us in the comments. Also, subscribe to our channel for more videos like this.